Hello, everybody. It is Tuesday. Hey, Kitty, how are you tonight? What's going on? How are things in Illinois? Has it got above minus two yet? We had the snow again today. We had snow. Um, but it was like a snow shower just kind with us so not 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 fun uh, not great for in-store business but uh you know hopefully we got lots of stuff done today is is the hope there's always stuff to do and it's winter in new england so hey adele and dazzle are with us welcome to the program tell me all what are you grateful for today what are you grateful for this tuesday oops left my glasses over here Got my glasses. Tell me what you are grateful for. That's what I want to know. What made this a great Tuesday? Oh, that yeah, I yeah, I'm with you there. It's not it's not fun. I tried to uh, uh, do some stuff uh, during the snow. I was moving some stuff around outside and on the truck and everything, and then I slipped, and I'm like, okay, I'm done with that for today. Uh, after I slipped and fell, I'm like, nope. I don't need to try to do things in weather. I'll uh, I'll uh, go back inside and do stuff inside. <laughs> uh, but uh, at least we didn't have to stop for gas on the way home. Ooh, furniture, nice. We got some coming tomorrow. We have some coming tomorrow. Um, which will be nice, uh, because we are, we are low right now. Yeah, they're teasing us with the weekend, Adele. I don't know whether we're really going to get it or not. Uh, it's, it's way too early. It sounds like what we were supposed to get Thursday, that's going out to sea. We're staying south of us, but, uh, uh, I don't know about the weekend. It would, uh, stink to, uh, to lose another weekend, but, uh, you know, this is February in New England. It happens, you know. These snow showers bring uh, bring us that much closer to spring. We are that much closer to spring, and that is exciting. Michelle's here with us live. Hugs, Michelle. Hugs. You got a self-care day? Oh, I love that. I'm doing my bad hearts, but I love that you got a self-care day today. That is awesome. That is awesome. I am so excited for you. I am so excited uh, for you that you got that. It is so important that we take a day every week, every week, um, or two half days to get self-care in. Self-care is so very, very important. Um, it, you just got to do it. it. It's not easy. It's not easy, but you got to do it. You got to do it. And we're going to talk about some self-care. I have a couple self-care things to talk about tonight. Ooh, that's not going to be good. You're not going to have people out this weekend in six degrees. I mean, that's the reality of of business during the pandemic, especially, um, you know, in weather, you know, cold or snow or rain, that people just don't go out. And and that's just a new reality for business, okay? That doesn't stop you from having to turn on the lights. That doesn't stop you from having to pivot and do things. Um, but um, the reality is is people do not come out in droves uh, if they do not have to get out. By the weekend, though, with you having it all week, Kitty, uh, that cold weather, um, people may be tired enough of being stuck inside with the kids that they may come out. So... Uh, you know, it sounds like, uh, you know, a good a good text that it's warm in here or something, you know, uh, you know, with that old that old sandwich board cold out here, warm in here. You know, if you do a sandwich, take a picture of a sandwich board and send that as a text uh, alert or something um, to, to your text base and uh, come and warm up uh, and shop. So, uh, uh, you know, the heat is on. That's that's what I'm saying to get people out and and get them in with you. Um, so uh, whatever you can do to to uh, 
to keep those dollars coming in this time of year. I mean, that's we were we've been talking about it. Uh, Cassandra and I were talking about it. You know, it's really we're really blessed for the diversification between things is certainly helping um, during um, well during all times, but during the you know these winter times when you look at things and you're like, you know, even our bank closed early today for what was really a nothing storm. Jennifer, how are you? I owe Brad a call. He's on my list for tomorrow. He's on my list. I owe Brad a call. Well, now that Jennifer's here, let's get this party started. Let's get this party started. We got the Good Morning, Good Night book. The Good Morning, Good Night book is how we start this program every night. Tonight we're on page 142. Good morning from the younger version of you who couldn't wait to be you at this age right now. Boom. Ah, Lincoln's birthday. That's a big deal in uh, Illinois. You don't celebrate President's Day. You celebrate Lincoln's birthday. I mean, I remember as a kid when we celebrated those as two separate holidays. Um, but uh, that is uh, great. Um, you going to round up to a penny for charity, pennies for charity or anything? I don't know. I'm just trying to think outside the box here, Kitty. I don't know. I will do my best. I will do my best, uh, Jennifer. I, I have him in my pile. I uh, oh, sat at my desk and I'm like, oh, shoot, I didn't get a hold of Brad today. Um, so let's talk about football lessons. You know, I told you that was going to be an underlying theme this week. Lessons from the football field. What we can learn from the Super Bowl this week. And today's lesson, while we're talking advertising, of, oh, because they get both uh, President's Day and Lincoln's birthday? Nice. Nice government hacks. <laughs> I love it. I love it, Kitty. Um, so I thought for tonight's lesson, okay, and I know not all of you are Brady fans, and that's okay. Okay, that that that's okay. We're, I'm not trying to convert you to a Brady fan. Um, if you want to keep on cheering on the losing team, eventually they will win. It's okay. I'm all for all for uh, you guys cheering whatever uh, whatever teams you want. I mean, we're actually a Patriots, um, Broncos, Cowboys, Brady household. So uh, you know, it's sort of a uh, you know how we follow football. Um, but putting that aside, um, I thought we would look back and talk about advertising and what this teaches us, Super Bowl advertising and what it teaches us. And to do that, I thought we'd look at some of the people that advertised during um, Brady's su first Super Bowl. Brady's, Brady first won the Super Bowl in 2002. Any guesses on some of the companies that advertised during the 2002 Super Bowl? Non-beverage advertisers. Any any guesses on some non-beverage advertisers during the 2002 Super Bowl that would spend millions of dollars in ad to be seen during the 2002 Super Bowl, the the first time Brady took the field in a Super Bowl? Um, any guesses on that? Uh... Yes, Jennifer, you you finally live in in the state that has the uh the Southern Patriots. Ooh, Chrysler, that's a good guess. That's uh, Go Dad. These are some good guesses. You know, uh oh. I think you're a little too early for GoDaddy, but while we're on the computer thing, how about CompUSA? Anybody remember CompUSA? They had an ad in the Super Bowl in uh, 2002. 
They had an ad. Um, you like tech companies, so uh, how about America Online? AOL had an ad during the 2002 Super Bowl. Um, let's see, what else we got for uh, tech companies? Radio Shack. Radio Shack had an ad during the 2002 Super Bowl. Radio Shack did. Um... I guess sort of a tech company, uh, you know, or they thought they were. Circuit City had an ad in the 2002 Super Bowl. Um, for the drug companies, on all the advertising, yes. Um, <clears throat> uh, let's see, who else had, oh, another tech, Yahoo. Yahoo had an ad in the... Uh, in, in that uh, back then, they are certainly not the company they used to be. Uh, hot jobs, okay. What's Radio Shack? <laughs> it's the store you would find me in as a kid. It was the store you'd find me in as a kid. Um, let's see, who else? Uh, hot jobs. Anybody? Uh, anybody remember? Uh, Hot jobs? Have you posted a job recently to hot jobs? Maybe we would have more employees if we were on hot jobs. Uh, and, uh, you know, Blockbuster. Blockbuster. Blockbuster had an ad during the Super Bowl. And Sears had an ad during the Super Bowl. So what does that teach us? What does that teach us? All these companies that are basically extinct now, okay, um, or just a, a figment of their former selves, okay, in the nearly 20 years since that first Super Bowl, in the 20 years since that, nearly 20 years since that first Super Bowl, uh, Tom Brady's first Super Bowl, not the first Super Bowl ever, um, you know, the, the to, to still be around, just like you've done in this past year, you have to keep changing. These companies... ...have to reach your customers' needs however they want to be reached, however they change, okay? I mean... Could you imagine texting your customers even just a few years ago, texting, you know, sending out a mass text? You have to try new ideas. And spending big bucks on average. Good ads, okay? Um, they do not guarantee, it does not guarantee survival. Um, but you have to keep changing. You have to keep evolving. You have to keep, you know, pivots the, the overused word of the year. But you have to keep doing that all the time. Not in bad times, not in crazy times like COVID, but you have to keep changing. You have to keep evolving. I mean, love him or hate him, that's what Brady has kept doing as a quarterback, okay? He has to keep on changing his football style. If he was playing football the same way he played back in 2002, everybody would be rolling right over him. But he's not. He's changed. He is not the same football player he was in 2002, Okay, and he's not the same football player he was just a couple years ago. Um, you have to keep evolving, you have to keep changing, or you become the blockbuster, you become the Radio Shack, you become the Comp USA, you become the Circuit City, and, and you're in the Remember When section of a book about your town instead of still relevant today. Okay, you have to do these things to continue to reinvent yourself. I mean, if you think of your businesses and how many times you've reinvented yourself in just the last year, okay? But even many of us in that are watching here live tonight have had businesses for multiple decades. They've reinvented themselves many, many times. Um, you know, Kitty used to be just kid store, okay? And, and now um, has things for the whole house. So, I mean, and is excited about her furniture coming in this week. You know, these are things that you have to constantly look at and say, how can we be better? How can we evolve? 
how can we grow, okay? And, and you know, what got you here won't get you there, okay? This is why you're always coaching up, why you're leveling up in your game and you're doing, looking for better. You're raising the bar, okay? You're constantly having to raise the bar and, and work on the bigger picture and, and work on how you, you remain relevant, okay? How do you remain relevant? Um, and, and it's through that evolution, through that change, that is how you remain relevant, okay? You know, you know, p- price isn't the answer. It isn't, it isn't about having the lowest price. There's always somebody that will beat you on that. You have to do new and exciting things to remain relevant, and you have to not be afraid to try things, and that's so important. And that's part of some of the other stuff I have to talk about tonight. Um, uh, I like this answer. Money is never, this quote from uh, Simon today, money is never a purpose. It's always a result. Money is never a purpose. It's always a result. Okay, Tom Brady didn't play football to make more money. I mean, he was already married, he's married to a supermodel that makes more than him. So money is, money is never a purpose. It is always a result. That that there is that quote, so I don't screw it up. We actually got to see Tom Brady up close and personal after that first Super Bowl. Side note, uh, you know, it's a it's a small world. We actually were in Florida at Disney World um, when he did his "I won the Super Bowl, I'm going to Disney World," and uh, he was. They were taking him through on a tour and parade and everything, and. You know, we didn't even know he was going to be there that day. And we turn, turned around, and, like, right next to us is walking Tom Brady. And uh, it was really uh, it was really kind of neat. Our, our brush with Famish. Um, uh, Kroger's jumping on the bandwagon to get their employees vaccinated. They are giving their employees a $100 bonus to get vaccinated. Uh, a one-time payment uh, of one hundred dollars to p- to employees who receive the full uh, vaccination. So uh, there you go. And while we're talking vaccines, Uber is going to offer free rides to Walgreens to expand COVID vaccine access in underserved communities. It's a pilot program starting in Chicago, Atlanta, Houston, and El Paso, Texas. Uh, But uh, through a partnership, uh, they will get people to their uh, vaccine appointments. Nana's got one tomorrow. We'll see how it goes. Um, We'll see what happens with that. Um, our friends in Congress and um, our friends at the National Retail Federation. So Congress is, there are members of Congress um, trying to push through a bill to remove the roll, the carryback provisions that were included in the um, CARES Act. So you could carry back losses and um, on your taxes, you could add a five-year carryback uh, for losses, um, and uh, and it suspended the loss limitation rules for those years. Uh, so that that vaccine bonus was, you know, I mean, you know, part of the the. Um, giving your employees a bonus to get vaccinated, you know, the incentive to get vaccinated. I mean, first you got to have the vaccine available for them to get vaccinated. So, uh, that, that is, that is almost the real challenge is having enough, uh, vaccine out there. But I have to say when we booked, uh, Nana's vaccine appointment, um, it was really, well, it was overly complicated. Okay. And then, but, on the positive side, at the end of it, they booked both the initial appointment plus the second dose appointment all in uh, in one online session by the time we got through it. 
but it was it was more complicated than it needed to be. Um, so I really feel for people trying to to navigate that. I mean, Cassandra and I were working together on it, so I mean, it was uh, it was interesting to get it done. Um, So, um, they're trying to get the, um, so our friends of the National Retail Federation are opposing people trying to change that rule, um, and in the tax law provisions that were given with that, and, uh, I hope that, uh, stays put. Um, bringing us back to self-care for a second, bringing us back to the self-care front, actually not for a second. I, um, George Schultz, who many of you probably don't remember, um, because it's been a while, he was Secretary of State under Ronald Reagan, okay, in the 80s. He had a weekly ritual, okay, you want to talk about self-care, but this was all, this was more than that, okay, he just recently passed away this past weekend at 100, so George Schultz lived to 100, Okay, with Secretary of State under Reagan. Um, and once a week, he would sit down in his office and sit down with a pen and a pad of paper. And for one hour, he would clear his mind and think about big ideas rather than ma the minutiae of government work. Um, and only two people were ever allowed. I mean, this guy is a busy guy, okay? And everybody's trying to get some of his time. Okay, and only two people were allowed to interrupt him, the president, you know, and his wife. Uh, other than that, that door wasn't to be opened. The phone wasn't to ring for an hour. And um, and and that story is important because these days we're constantly interrupted by minutia. The alerts, text messages, they make it impossible to carve out time to think through difficult problems or come up with new and creative ideas. Letting your mind wander, a British, uh, Sandy Mann, a British psychologist has said, makes us more creative, better at problem solving, better at coming up with creative ideas. The Dutch have a word for this concept, Nixon, or the art of doing nothing. Uh, and uh, according to a... Uh, Another journalist, the boredom could open up the mind to creativity, problem solving, and a more ambitious and more ambitious life goals. Schultz's biggest accomplishment in government was precisely such a fresh idea, a recognition which most other Reagan advisors lacked, that Mikhail Gorbachev was serious about reforming the Soviet Union. But the best quote of this, the best quote of this, Okay, and this is the thought I want you to take away from this. Okay, taking an hour, taking the self-care time, taking the time to rejuvenate like Michelle took her time today. Okay, you waste years by not being able to waste hours. Think about that. You waste years by not taking the time to waste hours, by not taking the time to spitball things, by not taking the time to look at things from a different perspective, by not taking the time to say, how would I do this completely and totally differently? Completely and totally differently. What would I do different? Okay, how, if we were reinventing this, if you were redoing your store from the ground up today, what would you do differently? How would you approach it, and why can't you do that now? Okay, um... Instead of all the reasons why you can't, come up with all the reasons why you can. And that's that's why I, uh, you know, I thought this was a really nice look back on uh, Secretary of State George Schultz. And I certainly didn't, you know, have my uh, political frame set set and and uh, watching it as much as I uh, keep an eye on things in Washington now. But I, you know, I I certainly appreciate that kind of uh, mindset. And that brings me to my last self-care thing uh, tonight. And I know we're not Self-Care Sunday, but this is about being a better you, being a better you. 
And this one you're going to have to think about for a little bit. And this is from uh, Seth uh, Godin. Uh, Adele, Adele and Bonnie tend to post his stuff a lot. But this is a really good thing because it is so true of you guys, okay? And I talk about how I disconnect and I leave my phone on the other side of the house and I turn it off, okay? I don't want to know, okay? You don't need to know. I mean, when I go and work with a store one-on-one, -on -one, you know, getting rid of the texting is one of the, the biggest productivity uh, increases that you can get. But uh, Seth titled this column, The Last Thing and the First Thing. The new ritual, even more than checking the windows and the doors before bed, is to check the incoming doom scroll a bit. Check Slack and email and make sure there are no loose ends. And then the ritual continues. First thing in the morning as we check the overnights to make sure everything is still okay. What if instead, just for a week, the last thing we did was make a list of exciting opportunities for the future? And if the first thing after waking up was doing some morning pages and jotting down what we're looking forward to, there's plenty of time to check the windows and doors during the rest of the day. Think about that. The last thing and the first thing, okay? So many of you have to see that last alert, that last text, that last email, that last thing on Facebook. Oh, there's that notification beaming at you. Um, and, you know, I have to see why it says 4 on Facebook or 10. Uh, what if it's, uh, you know, whatever? Uh, it doesn't matter, you know? Check, you know, that doesn't matter. It actually leads to a restless night's sleep. I actually have some strategies for this. I'm going to share in this upcoming Self-Care Sunday um, some new tips for disconnecting, some additional tips for disconnecting, because I know it's hard. I know it's hard. And we are bombarded by alerts. We are bombarded by alerts. It is, it is, it is crazy how many alerts we have um, and how many things are biding for our time. But to, to work on the big things, to plant the big seeds, to write those blank pages, to, to fill that up, you need, you need the open time of your mind. Your mind is, is a precious resource, and you can open that up and, and grow with it, okay? You can open that and grow um, if you allow it, okay? If you get yourself out of the minutia of the doom scroll. If you get yourself out of the minutia of the constant alerts. Hey, bombarded, Michelle, yes. Uh, hey, Kelly, great to have you with he us here even late. Uh, you know, you're at one of those places you can do that Costco pickup they're, where they're testing curbside. That would be cool. Um but yeah, let's get out of that. Let's that will make you better. It will make your business better. It will make your relationships better. It'll make everything better. Okay? I mean, I turn off after this. After after I'm on at night, you know, that's it. The the phone gets plugged into the charger and I'm done. Okay? I you know, there you you have to find time to disconnect people. And and it's just so important to you know, disconnect to grow. And that's, uh, I have some interesting tools and themes coming up uh, to share with you on that even more to help you do it. To even gamify it. I'll help you get there. We'll get there together. You know, this video and everything I talk about every night, this video and everything I talk about goes over to narts.org slash resale strong by noon the very next day. Noon, I tell you, it all gets there. Quicker than a northeastern storm, uh, you know, the uh, snowstorm, and quicker than what it feels like the spring is going to happen, but it's coming. The, you can even see all the videos there on the YouTube channel. You're not alone running this store where you can like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell so you know when a new one drops. I am here live in the Narts Private Facebook group every night at more 8 than ish, more 8 than ish, live here every night. But if you have a question in between, you just email me, neil, N-E-I-L, at ecistores.com. N-E-I-L, at ecistores.com is where you find me. 
we start this program every night with the Good Morning, Good Night book. The Good Morning, Good Night book is how we start it. Tonight, we're on page 142. Good morning from the younger version of you who couldn't wait to be you at this age right now. Good night from the older version of you who remembers the very moment you are in right now and is grinning from ear to ear because you have no idea about the wonders ahead. There's your graphics, folks. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Neil Abramson. I do like a good party, a wedding, a bar mitzvah even. We will party again. We will be in person again. And when we are, I will be right there with you. But until then, and until tomorrow night at more 8 than ish, more 8 than ish, it's important for you to know that you... And you, but most importantly you, yes you, you're not alone running this store. Have a great night. It's time for dessert. Hey, Marianne, sorry I missed you. We'll see you tomorrow, live.